So, one of the chapter objectives is how an x-ray beam is created inside of the dental x-ray tube. And I'm going to attempt to describe in detail how dental x-rays are produced. So imagine our x-ray is, our x-ray machine is plugged into the wall and turned on. So like this is the wall, it's like turned on. Electricity is going to come out of the wall outlet at about 110 to 120 volts. We don't need that many volts at the moment, so we're going to enter the step down transformer or the low voltage transformer, which is going to make the volts reduce to about three to five volts. The three to five volts is going to enter the tube, which would be right here. And then the negative cathode, which contains the tungsten filament circuit, which is tungsten wire right here. Uh, tungsten is just a type of metal. And these volts are going to heat the, fil the filament to an incandescence, which means that it's going to glow. So the milliampere or the MA, is what determines the heat of the filament and basically how many electrons are going to be produced. So the heat allows the separation of electrons from their atoms. And the separation from their atoms is what's called thermionic emission. So they're going to stay like chilling in this little electron cloud hovering around the tungsten target in the molybdenum focusing cup. And that's in the negative cathode until the exposure button is pressed. So we haven't even pressed the exposure button yet and this is going to heat up and separate the electrons. Once the button is pressed to take the x-ray, the line current is now going to enter the step up or the high voltage circuit because we don't need three to five volts anymore. So we started with 110 to a 220 from the wall outlet. It went to step down and went to three to five. We don't need three to five anymore. We now need about 65,000 to 100,000 volts. The um, KVP setting is what's going to control the speed at which the electrons travel, and you need about 70,000 volts, um, which is what's required to knock an electron out of the innermost shell of an atom. So that's why we need that amount of power. This increased voltage is going to be what we need to blast or propel the electrons towards the positive anode. So they're right here and you need a lot of power to blast it towards right here. Um, the molybdenum focusing cup is what's going to direct the electrons toward the anode and the step up voltage is what blasts the electrons towards the anode. The electrons are now propelled to the focal spot or the tungsten target at the end of the anode. The electrons, where am I, hold on. The electrons are going to collide with that target, which is what results in the X-ray radiation. So the kinetic energy will result in about 1% radiation, and the rest of the 99% of that energy will be lost in heat energy. The copper stem around the target, so this is the target, and the rest of this is copper. That's what's going to absorb the uh, lost heat energy and disperse it into the tube. So this whole area is the rest of the tube and that heat can disperse into that vacuum space. The tungsten target is set at an angle to direct most of the x-rays toward the window and PID. So this is the window and this is the PID that's going and that's where it's going to shoot out of. The rest of the x-rays will be absorbed by the lead glass housing. And it doesn't exit the tube head. So this is leaded. So the x-rays that blast out this direction is going to be absorbed. So the only x-rays will blast out here. This is the useful or the primary beam. So any beam that's going to out, that's what's useful. So that's the primary beam. And it will go through the unleaded glass window past the tube head seal and through the aluminum disc filters. The aluminum is what filters out, so okay, so this is the tube head seal and then the aluminum filters here is what filters out the soft x-rays or the long wave 
length x-rays. We want the strong short wavelength x-rays only. Then it goes through the collimator. So imagine this is like a 2 day a 2D representation of a 3D thing. So it's um going to be more like a like a circle, but that's what's going to narrow. So imagine like it could be wider, it could be narrower. We only want it to be the size of like the the actual film we're using. So the collimator is what restricts and narrows the beam to a more desired size. So then the beam is going to exit the tube head at the opening of the PID toward the film or the sensor that's going to be located in the patient's mouth. And that's how the x-ray is generated.